Sonny Gray's time in the Big Apple is coming to an end. We'll have the details on what the Yankees might get in return for the right-handed pitcher. Hello and welcome to Geico Sports Night. Sports fans, I'm Chris Williamson. Ahead on the show, can anybody stop the Red Hot Islanders? They've won four straight and 14 of the last 17 going into their matchup with the Ducks. We'll have the highlights, but first, we start with championship weekend, baby, in the NFL. Beginning in the AFC, Chiefs hosting the Patriots. Tom Brady was a senior in high school when Patrick Mahomes was born. Chiefs seeking to end a 49-year Super Bowl drought. What a raucous arrowhead crowd supporting them, but it's the Patriots who dominate the first half. Already leading 7 0 in the final minute. Brady connects with Philip Dorsett for the 29 yard score. New England with a 14 0 halftime lead. But the Chiefs find their flow in the second half, fourth quarter. Now 17 14. Mahomes splits a pass for Damian Williams, and the Patriots' defense was not ready for it. Williams goes untouched for the 23 yard score. Chiefs take their first lead of the night at 21 17. Now the team's traded touchdowns, it's first and goal for the Pats with under a minute remaining. And it's Rex Burkhead with what seems to be a game-clinching touchdown. 31-28, New England in front. But the Patriots left 39 seconds on the clock. That was enough time for the Chiefs to get in field goal range. Harrison Butker calmly drills a game-time 39-yard field goal to overtime. We go tied at 31. But the Patriots won the coin toss, and they never let the Chiefs offense get back on the field. Burkhead. From two yards out, the New England Patriots are going to their 11th Super Bowl, 37 to 31, the final over Kansas City in an overtime thriller. Now, this game recap is presented by Geico. TB12 pulling out his usual magic, throwing for almost 350 yards on the night. Mahomes wasn't too shabby either with three touchdowns, but Brady and Belichick pick up their ninth AFC title together. All right, to the NFC Championship game, Rams visiting the Saints. Drew Brees' teams jumped out to a 13-0 lead in the first half, but in the fourth quarter, it's 20-20 Brees trying to put the Saints in the Super Bowl. He goes deep down the sideline. Ted Ginn somehow pulls down the 43-yard reception. 158 remaining on the clock. Saints are in business. But here's the play that everybody will be talking about. Third down, Brees looks for Tommy Lee Lewis, who is decked before the ball arrives by Nico Roby Coleman. No call on the play. Sean Payton is furious. Saints would have to settle for the field goal in a 23-20 lead. Rams get it back with 141 on the clock. Gall hits Robert Woods. Gain of 16 yards on the catch. And they give their kicker a chance to tie it. They call on Greg Zerlin. For a second, it looked like the kick might go wide right, but he sneaks it in for 48 yards. That pushes the game to overtime. Saints won the toss and got the ball first. Breeze facing big time pressure up the middle. Throws it up for grabs. It's intercepted by John Johnson. Rams are fired up, great field position after the pick, and they make it hurt. Four plays later, Zerlin pumped it home again. The 57-yarder pushes the Rams to the Super Bowl for the first time since the 2001 season. They win 26-23. to Now here's a look at the NFC Championship game recap. Drew Brees had a decent game, but that pick in overtime was costly. Jared Goff threw for almost 300 yards, but the storyline after the game remained the crucial blown pass interference call on the Rams. It was simple. They blew the call. They said it should never have not been a call. They said not only was it interference, it was helmet to helmet. There were two calls. They just they couldn't believe it. You know, there's just too much at stake. And it's listen, it's a hard job for those guys because it's happening fast. But I don't know if there was ever a more obvious pass interference call that, you know, here it is, the NFC Championship game. So tough one to swallow. Time for Football Night in New York as we welcome in Ralph Acchiano, John Jastrzemski, Jose Duzabal. And guys, this was a crazy championship weekend, a lot better than the divisional round. Which team impressed you the most going to the Super Bowl? Well, I should say the Patriots because, as we know, nobody thought the Patriots would win, the complete underdogs. But honestly, I think I was more impressed by the Rams because they played at a place that is so hard to play, so unbelievably loud. And they also showed something that people forget with the Rams. We think about Jared Goff and the brilliance of Sean Payton and all that offense. They're a really good defensive team, too. And they kept the pressure on Drew Brees, made some big plays with their defense. In that environment, that really, really impressed me. Yeah, definitely. I would have to say the Rams were more impressive to me. I mean, Tom Brady is Tom Brady. They were underdogs, but not really to me. Being in the AFC East most of my career, I would have to say Tom Brady is going to be Tom Brady. But like you said, a lot of people forget about that defense. And Dominican Sue had a hell of a game, a sack and a half. Dante Fowler on that pick by Johnson came through with pressure. That's why they traded him for. So I think the Rams were definitely way more impressive getting a win in, in the Superdome, which is almost impossible to win at. 
Fellas, you guys are forgetting about the GOAT. I mean, you think about <laughs> Tom Brady, you think about the New England Patriots on the road, hostile environment, dealing with the punch gut. Remember, the Chiefs came storming back in this game. Mahomes is lining up. Damian Williams is making some plays. They get the turnover on the interception, and for the Patriots to keep answering I know it's something we've seen now for the last 17 or 18 years okay. it's nauseating to a good portion of this audience but to go into Arrowhead come back in multiple occasions that drive in overtime third down after third down after third down it's the New England Patriots going to another Super Bowl it's breathtaking what they're <laughs> able to do now let's go back to their early game Sunday and that blown pass interference call was huge is it more on the refs or on the Saints for their loss well, I think it's more on the Saints for the loss, but I think that the refs definitely contributed to that. That is an atrocious call. Uh, it seemed obvious live. And very often, we'll complain about the officials, and it's because we're seeing it in super slow motion and we're forgetting how hard it is on the field. That was obvious from the, wherever you were standing. Now, I don't understand why the Saints were throwing there. I know on now in this era in offense, a lot of coaches think, well, okay, a short pass is as good as a run. Not in that situation, but still. Still, they definitely, definitely, uh, that call should have been made. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it was it was definitely a missed call, but the ref was in a bad point of view. Kind of like the game we just saw, the, the Chiefs game, when they threw the personal foul against Brady because the ref was behind him. My thing is, if you cannot see it, don't throw the flag. And the ref was in a bad position. He couldn't throw the, he couldn't throw the flag because he really couldn't tell if Nikhil Roby got there early or got there late. So I appreciate him not throwing it if he really didn't see it, but it was definitely a missed P.I. call. Fellas, I hate blaming the officiating. They cost the New Orleans Saints a chance to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, you think about that call. That's a third down play. It's going to put you first and goal at the three-yard line. You're milking the clock there. Rams are not touching the ball. It's game, set, match. So, I know we can talk about Aaron Donald and the Dominican Sioux. We t can talk about Jared Goff maybe outperforming Drew Brees. But if that call is made, the New Orleans Saints are going to the Super Bowl. That was as bad as it gets. I can't think of a call in a big game considering the stakes that was worse. The tuck rule, maybe. Aside from that, I mean, find me a call that late in the game that's going to cost the team a chance to go to the Super Bowl. And what's most interesting about that to me is usually it, throughout the NFL, when a call like that is missed, the league is going to overreact to it, which makes yeah. me wonder, are we going to see next year a chance for uh, officials, maybe, or coaches to maybe challenge a couple of calls per game? Because there's going to be a lot of cries for that to review something like that. Yeah, and Saints fans, coaches, players will be thinking about that call for a very long time. All right. right. These guys will be back in a bit with a brand new segment called the Few Minute Drill. You won't want to miss that. Plus, the Islanders are back at the Coliseum as they look to continue their unreal stretch with a tough matchup against the Ducks. And how close are the Yankees to shipping out Sonny Gray? And what could they get back in return? That and more when Geico Sports Night comes right back. Geico Sports Night is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. That rocking chair would look great in our new house. Oh, a new house, eh? Well, you should definitely see how Geico could help you save on homeowners insurance. Nice tip. I'll give you two bucks for the chair. Two? <laughs> That's a Victorian antique. All right. How much for the recliner, then? Wait, wait. wait. How did that get out of here? That, that is definitely not for sale. Is this a yard sale? If it's in the yard, then it's for, for sale. sale. Uh, here we go. Geico. It's easy to switch and save on homeowners and renters insurance. If you want a car from a company that's been building them for 115 years, get a Ford. If you want Waze and Amazon Alexa compatibility, get a Ford. If you want a car that doesn't have any of that, get anything but a Ford. Otherwise... You're going to want a Ford. Now you can get a new Ford Escape with 0% financing for 60 months or lease for just $139 a month. Only at your local Ford store. This winter, find what you love in New York State. Escape at ilovenwine.com.
Looking for Toyo Winter Tires at a great price? Town Fair Tire is New England's largest name brand discount tire dealer. So we sell Toyo Winter Tires for the guaranteed lowest price. Plus, when you buy your Toyo Tires at Town Fair Tire, you get free services for life. Free mounting, free tire rotations, free flat repairs, and free stone tire changeovers for life. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Jets House, presented by Green Giant, is back. Join Sam Donald, Quincy Anunwa, Robbie Anderson, Nick Mangold, Wayne Krebet, Lavernius Coles, and other Jets players and legends at Spin NYC Saturday, January 26th and Sunday, January 27th for that can't-miss event the weekend before the big game. Enjoy all-inclusive food and beverages, player autographs, and all the ping-pong you can handle. Tickets are on sale now at nyjets.com slash Jets House. Yes, yes. Wednesday, UConn women's basketball returns to SNY. Nafisa Collier and the Huskies head back home to stores as they host SMU at Campbell. Coverage begins with pregame Wednesday at 6.30 only at SNY. Time for the Ram Rumor Report. According to John Heyman, Reds are trying to extend Sonny Gray now before their trade with the Yankees is finalized. Meanwhile, the Yanks are expected to relieve, receive second base prospect Shed Long and a draft pick from Cincy. Ken Rosenthal says not to expect the trade done until Monday. All right, time for some baseball talk as JJ joins me across the studio. So Sonny Gray was not a successful part of the Yankees, but he was a depth piece for them. What's your concern level regarding the Yankees pitching rotation right now? Chris, I'm cool with the Yankee rotation right now. Now, look, Sonny Gray was a total debacle. I mean, you think about Sonny Gray coming over from the Oakland A's. He was supposed to be a pitcher that was going to make a big-time difference. That did not happen. Sonny Gray couldn't pitch at Yankee Stadium. Sonny Gray always would make excuses. So, to me, the Yankees have to move on. And I look at Tanaka, and I look at Hap coming back, Severino, Paxton, CC, Loisega, Herman down in the minor leagues. I think they were A-OK, and I didn't think it was a must for Sonny Gray to be back on his team. All right, so given all the starters that you just mentioned, which Yankee starter do you think can make the most impact? Who's your X factor? To me, Chris, it's James Paxton. Remember, James Paxton coming over from the Seattle Mariners, that's a guy who's got A-plus type stuff. That's a guy who, to me, can be a legitimate ace at the top of the rotation if he's right. Now, he has never shown you an ability to go and pitch 210 at 220 innings, but I would look at Paxton as a guy who could be a real X factor for this team. He needs to be the guy that delivers and delivers in a big way. All right, now moving to the Mets. A.J. Pollock is still available and could be looking at a one-year deal. Should the Mets get Pollock if it's like a pillow contract? Yeah, I can't see it, though, Chris. I'm sorry, I can't. You're going to tell me now all of a sudden that A.J. Pollock is going to settle for less? Once you get Machado and Harper off of the open market, these guys are going to get a lot more, whether it's Marlon Gonzalez, whether it's A.J. Pollock. And with the injury concerns that Pollock has had throughout his career, I am not of the mindset that giving him, let's say, a four- or five-year deal is going to be in the cards, and I can't see him settling for a one-year deal. To me, Adam Jones is the guy you go get. You get him for less. He's a guy who puts a bat on the ball. He's put on winning teams. If they're in on a right-handed outfielder, I think that's your guy. All right, J.J., always love your insight. Always learn something new. We try, Chris. Yeah, we try. All right, thanks so much. All right, Islanders facing off against the Ducks, who have lost 12 of their last 14 games coming into the contest early in the first period with Isles on the power play. Josh Bailey. Finds Cal Clutterbuck in the slot. Islanders take a 1-0 lead. Still in the first period. When Adam Pellick fires a shot from the blue line, Clutterbuck comes up with a big rebound and birds it in the back of the net. His second goal of the game and sixth of the season, 2-0 Isles. Late in the second period. Devin Taze steps and shoots towards the net. It's tipped and scored by Leo Komarov, his sixth of the season. Islanders with their fifth in a row behind Robin Lenders' 11th shutout of his career. 3-0 the final. Now, speaking of shutouts, let's take a look at the times the Islanders have seen back-to-back -back shutouts with different goaltenders. Four times in total, Billy Smith and Chico Resch did it twice in consecutive seasons. Of course, Grice and Leonard able to do it this weekend against the Caps and Ducks. The Isles aren't the only hot team in the Big Apple. Coming up, we'll check in on the Nets, who are above 500 in January for the first time in years. Plus, we know who's playing in this year's Super Bowl, but how long until the Jets or Giants are in one? It's one of the several questions in our brand new segment next on Geico Sports Night. Junior Achievement teaches young people all over the world 
to prepare them for the future of work. We go into classrooms and we teach entrepreneurial skills and leadership skills. When you actually create a business when you're in your teens, it raises your self-confidence. Junior Achievement is really unique because they inspire young people to think creatively. The City Foundation's Pathways to Progress initiative helped us reach kids in over 50 countries. The city has also loaned us their executives and their employees to help us deliver our programs. Our youth are three times more likely to become entrepreneurs, and they're more likely to create jobs for others. They are going to bring an entrepreneurial spirit to making our world a better place. This winter, you could go nimble and turbocharged. Or go out in style. Or go bold and iconic. Or you could go test drive all three and choose for yourself. The decision is all yours. Current non-GM owners and lessees get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Cadillac XT5 from around $439 per month. When you're in a car or motorcycle crash, the insurance company is interested in just two things, getting you to settle quick and cheap. That's what they do. And no matter how cute their little gecko is or how nice their paid actor sounds, they're not your neighbor and you're not in good hands. I'm Keith Trantolo, and the last thing they want is for you to call me because I'll make them pay you a lot more than they want to. Call Trantolo and Trantolo and let our family help your family. Wireless for 15 bucks a month. That's not right. It's right, all right. Carpet showers? That's not right. That's not right. Neither is the way you get wireless. Mint Mobile took what's wrong with wireless and made it right. We're easy, online, and just 15 bucks a month. Get your plan today at mintmobile.com. If it wasn't for James Harden exploding for 30-plus points every night lately, the Nets would be the main story in the league. Brooklyn's won seven of their last nine games, including a big victory over Houston. The Nets, who are tied for the second-best record since December 7th, are a pretty happy bunch, right? The uh, uh, kind of rhetoric on the bench was, we can do that, you know, we're, uh, we're good. You know, they just made a run. Like, there was no, like, uh, uh, you know, heads down or look of, look of frustration. It really it was all positive. I think that's... That's a big part of the the, 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 the kind of the uh, um, characteristic of this team. We went on that eight-game losing streak, and uh, you know, guys was hurt, and guys coming back now and getting healthy. So um, there's a lot of tangibles, but at the end of the day, man, I think we're playing great basketball. Here's a look at the Nets schedule coming up, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. They've got a much easier stretch than recently. They do have to take on the Celtics, but four of their five next games are at home, so they should rely on the crowd to give them a big boost. All right, Rex Burkhead may have picked up the game-winning touchdown in overtime, but Tom Brady and Bill Belichick had their fingerprints all over another Patriots comeback. New England defeated the Chiefs in OT as they are one step away, people, from their sixth Super Bowl championship. Here's Brady after the game. We've overcome a lot this year. Um, you know, down but not out. And we found a way to play our best the last four games. Buffalo Jets had the bye, played great against Chargers. Played really well today, and uh, we're going to need one more great game. So that was a pretty uh, great way to end it. I was probably as excited as I've been in a long time. And, uh, you know, a lot of things, one play here, one play there, could have changed everything, but that's football. Time now for a new segment called the Few Minute Drill. Like the Two Minute Drill, it's fast paced. Unlike the Two Minute Drill, play a little loose with the time constraints. You guys ready? Let's, let's do, do it. it. All right, LeJay, who is closer to a Super Bowl, the Giants or the Jets? 
I would have to say the Giants, and it pains me to say that being a longtime Jet player, I would just have to say the Giants, the weapons they have. Saquon Barkley had an amazing year. You get a healthy Odell coming back and Evan Ingram. I would just say, based on their offense, I would say the Giants were suited better to make a run at the Super Bowl. Now, I'm not so sure that the Jets won't get there first, but the Giants are closer right now because they've got the pieces. You think about if they still have Eli Manning, I think that he's still a top flight quarterback. Obviously, they have Odell Beckham, Saquon Barkley. The Jets don't have pieces like that at all. All right, JJ, should the Jets regret for moving on from DeMario Davis? Yeah, Chris. I mean, you watch DeMario Davis ball out for the New Orleans Saints today. He has an interception. He's all over the place. He's done a great job playing the linebacker position, doing what needs to be done. Now you got a new defense coming in, the 4-3 Greg Williams scheme. I'd like to have DeMario Davis as a part of the fold. So, yes, I think the Jets are going to regret Moving on from DeMario. Yeah, definitely. DeMario was a great teammate when I played with the Jets, a guy that can run and hit, and he has enough speed where he can cover tight ends on one-on-one -on -one basis. I think the Jets really messed up when they let him go. He's a guy that can play every down. You can leave him out there, and he had a Pro Bowl-type season this year. He doesn't get a lot of recognition, but he had a hell of a year this year. All right, Ralph, there's a report that Pat Mahomes could sign the NFL's first-ever $200 million deal. Will it happen? That sounds like something his agent wishes will happen. I don't know that they're going to quite get there, but it's going to be close. Quarterback salaries do not go down. They continue to go up. We're already at $30 million a year. By the time he's a free agent, we might be at $40 million. You go long enough. Do the math, you got 200. Yeah, I'm no economics major, fellas, so I'm not going to try to pretend what the uh, salary cap's going to look like four or five years down the line, but I'm going to roll the dice on it. I'm going to say yes, because I'm a believer in Mahomes. I'm a believer in the talent. I'm going to say that those salaries for quarterbacks continue to climb. I'm going to say he's a $200 million man. All right, Leger, besides this one, how many more Super Bowls will, or Super Bowl visits, will Brady and Belichick make together? I think no more. Honestly, I feel like if the, the New England Patriots win this year, Brady's going to ride off to the sunset with his wife Giselle and have time with the kids. And I think Belichick will leave with him. I don't think one stays without the other. I think they've, they came in and grew together, and they'll both leave at the same time. It's never going to end. Really, seriously, I, I, I will never pick against them again. I will never assume they're dead until they're actually dead. This is uh, it's the most unbelievable run ever. It would not surprise me that they've got a couple more in them. All right, J.J., which losing team from Sunday has the better chance of getting back to their conference championship game next year? Chris, I think it's the Kansas City Chiefs because of Patrick Mahomes. He's here to stay. I mean, he's going to win the MVP award this year. They got weapons galore. I know Andy Reid's got to get over the hump in the big game. That happened again to him here on championship. Sunday, but to me, it's the young quarterback in Mahomes, not the guys getting up there in age in Drew Brees. Yeah, definitely. I would have to say it's Kansas City Chiefs. They got a young quarterback that's coming back. Young weapons. Hill's coming back. You also got uh, Kelsey at tight end on defense. I am a little worried to see what they will do. I mean, D. Ford is going to be a free agent. I think if, if Houston and D. Ford can come back, they'll be in the AFC Championship game again next year. All right, lastly, Ralph, who's the number one player to keep an eye on in Super Bowl 53? Well, that's easy. It's number 12. I mean, the greatest player I've ever seen, one of the greatest Super Bowl players of all time. He is going to be the key. What magic does he have uh, left in his what may be his one last run at the Super Bowl championship? Also, keep an eye, by the way, on Todd Gurley, how healthy he gets leading up to that, but that's before the game. In the game, it's Tom Brady. That's what I'm rolling, Ralph. To me, it's Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley's got to have a monster game, fellas. Monster game if the LA Rams are going to win. He's got to be catching the ball out of the backfield. He's got to be running the football effectively, and it's still odd to me that we we haven't really seen Todd Gurley unleashed in these two playoff games. So I need Todd Gurley close to 100% if the Rams are going to win. That's the guy you got to watch. All right, you guys answered all the questions. Like how you think. Did we pass the test? You did pass the test. Nice. All right. Be quick, quick, with it. Be quick, baby. <laughs> quick on your feet. All right, that's Ralph, JJ, and Leger. Thanks so much, guys. Coming up, and his canter is becoming a lightning rod for attention for the Knicks, and he was back at practice Sunday. We'll hear from Cantor when Geico Sports Night returns. Geico Sports Night is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. Hey, I heard you're moving into a new apartment. Yeah, it's pretty stressful. This music is supposed to relax me, though. Maybe you mellow out a bit if you got Geico to help you with your renter's insurance. Wow, oh, Geico helps with renter's insurance. Good to know. Yeah. And they can save you a lot of money. Wow. Suddenly I feel so relieved. You guys are fired. Get to know Geico and see how much you could save on renter's insurance. 
Don't miss the Save Big Sale at Mattress Firm. For a limited time, save not just $100, not just $200, but up to $400 on the best brands like Beautyrest, Serta, and Sleepies. That means you can get a Serta Memory Foam Queen mattress for just $397. And Friday through Monday, take home a free adjustable base with your qualifying mattress. Up to a $699 value, free! Have you ever seen a sale with savings this big? Hurry in today. Your budget stretches further at Mattress Firm. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. Your Buick doesn't have a roof rack. This is my Buick. How are we going to fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. Pay no interest for 72 months on most Buick models. Or current eligible lessees get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Encore for around $149 per month. The body, it is a work of art, an incredible feat of engineering, and a beautiful biological mystery. A mystery scientists work tirelessly to unravel. And while many questions remain, we now have new insight into why our immune system has difficulty detecting cancer cells in the body. This new understanding has led to a revolutionary approach called immunotherapy and a new hope for fighting cancer. Immunotherapy works by boosting our body's natural immune system, empowering it to identify and eradicate many types of cancer cells. Speak with your doctor and visit su2c.org slash immunotherapy to see if this approach may be right for you or your loved one. Your body might just be your greatest hope. Oh, what's, uh, what's going on? Uh, sorry, dude. You just got traded to apartment 3B. We traded you for two Swedish exchange students and a blender. Uh, but, but we're waving the blender. <laughs> hey, you, you guys can't do that. Wait. Ah, uh, the deal fell through. You didn't pass your physical. So no blender. Sports Night, the only place where all New York sports live every night starting at 11 on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Look who Heisman Trophy winner Kyler Murray was working out with Sunday. None other than the polarizing sealer Antonio Brown, whose cousin played with Murray at Oklahoma. He could be one of the first QBs selected in the first round of the 2019 draft, and maybe he falls to the Giants should they want to draft a QB. Now, off the cheeseburger diet and his Cantor participated in Knicks practice Sunday. A lot of the conversation about Cantor recently has been about him not making a trip to London. The Turkish native feared the Turkish government might kill him for his views. When the Knicks were over in Europe, Cantor met with members of Congress to talk about his deal. Here's his thoughts on that. Most of the people, you know, the, I was telling about all the senators and congressmen especially, I was telling them about my issues and they stopped me. They said, don't worry about it, we already, we already know what's going on in Turkey. And that, that actually made me very happy, all the support I'm, I'm getting from the congressmen and the senators. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, again, it, it was... I was very happy that NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and, uh, you know, uh, Nick Stone and James Stolen was show support. So that shows that, you know, the NBA stands with freedom of speech and stands with uh, democracy. So it definitely uh, made me very happy and, you know, just uh, gave me a lot of uh, confidence of uh, what I'm doing. One last note before we go. The Knicks are undecided about what to do with Frank Nielakina, but if they decide to trade him, there are already some teams interested. The Magic and Suns have inquired about Nielakina's availability, according to Stefan Bonney of the Daily News. That's going to do it for Geico Sports Night, people. I'm Chris Williamson. Remember to start your Monday evening at 5 with Daily News Live. Sonny Gray's time in the Big Apple is coming to an end. We'll have the details on what the Yankees might get in return for the right-handed pitcher. Hello and welcome to Geico Sports Night. Sports fans, I'm Chris Williamson. Ahead on the show, can anybody stop the Red Hot Islanders? They've won four straight and 14 of the last 17 going into their matchup with the Ducks. We'll have the highlights, but first, we start with championship weekend, baby, in the NFL. Beginning in the AFC, Chiefs hosting the Patriots. Tom Brady was a senior in high school when Patrick Mahomes was born. Chiefs seeking to end a 49-year Super Bowl drought. 
One of Rock's Arrowhead crowd supporting them, but it's the Patriots who dominate the first half. Already leaning seven, nothing in the final minute. Brady connects with Philip Dorsett for the 29-yard score. New England with a 14-0 halftime lead. But the Chiefs find their flow in the second half, fourth quarter. Now 17-14, Mahomes splits a pass for Damian Williams, and the Patriots' defense was not ready for it. Williams goes untouched for the 23-yard score. Chiefs take their first lead of the night at 21-17. Now after the team's traded touchdowns, it's first and goal for the Pats with under a minute remaining. And it's Rex Burkhead with what seems to be a game-clinching touchdown. 31-28, New England in front. But the Patriots left 39 seconds on the clock. That was enough time for the Chiefs to get in field goal range. Harrison Butker calmly drills a